Hi guys, welcome to another beer review and this is one that I should have done um, a fair bit sooner because the beer itself is a little past its best before date and I can't remember when I picked this up but I picked it up from Beretta and it was coming towards the end of its sell by date when I bought it so it was discounted slightly. So we're going back over to the Rogue Brewery over in, where are these based? I always forget where these guys are based. In Oregon. And we're looking at a bottle of the Mocha Porter, which is clocking in at 5.3%. Ingredients are C120, which I think is a malt, uh, dark chocolate malt, kiln coffee, which I think is another malt, Belgian, I believe. Um, barley malts, Rebel and Freedom hops, which I think are grown especially by Rogue themselves and more used for the IPAs, if I remember correctly. And then they use Pac Man yeast and, of course, water. So you can actually um, read up on the different ingredients on the Rogue Farms website so if I remember I will put that information down below because that's what I love about Rogue even though I've only had you know, not even a handful of their beers is the fact that they grow their own ingredients they've got the you know they're growing like pumpkins and they all their own fruit and stuff to put in their beers very experimental I know they sometimes get a bit of a bad rap with the like big bomber bottles like the Sriracha Stout and um, the Donut series that they do. But some of them are straight faced beers, let's put it that way, that I have had. I've been really quite good actually. Um, and it's great to see that we can get rogue beers here in Germany and this was imported by One Pint who I think also um, they import a lot of Brewdog stuff as well so um, yeah the Mocha Porter 100% pure rogue der risk dream and uh, yeah fantastic looking artwork very simple but striking at the same time and the best before date actually is 30th of the 4th 2017 so uh, yeah, recording this on the 15th or 16th of May, so it's not too far gone, so I'm not expecting too much fade, but that being said, the, well, probably well could be. Talk proper English here. Anyway, nice amounts of smoke coming out there, not too much. And uh, yeah, let's see what this one's like. Nice snap, crackle and pop so far to uh, steal that phrase off the albino rhino. Well, I am nearly at that level of pigment, so, you know, it's like fat people can call other fat people fat because, you know, we're all the same. You know, white people are a piece of shit. Yeah, you know, people are people are shit anyway, let's not lie about it. Uh, but yeah, beer in a glass, and uh, yeah, that's not quite pitch black, but it's a very dark, intense, oaky... Like almost like really soaked and varnished wood, and uh, yeah, it does look like a a glass of a mocha, and the head pretty much dissipated quite quickly actually, but it's uh, got like a nice tan sort of look to it. It's just it's not even a film on the top, but it's leaving nice traces on the side of the glass. But uh, yeah, that that's definitely what I was expecting it to look like. Let's see what we get on the aroma. There's the head. Just a little swirl and it's come up quite a lot actually. Anyway, give it a sniff. And that's got this like sort of um licorice, dandelion and burdock sort of aroma to it. Yeah, quite a big hit of licorice. Much of those um like licorice black currant sweets that you can get. There is that sort of like berry-like fruit quality in there, slight tartness in that respect. Definitely get a, a coffee aroma in there as well. 
a lovely dark intense chocolate as well like a cocoa powder almost and then when you go underneath that you do get that slight hoppy character but it's not too in your face it's almost got a it's like a dessert like a slightly fruity dark chocolate dessert like a black forest gato but i'm almost getting like um a little bit of an almond marzipan vibe in there. Very dessert-like, very cakey. Nice little bit of uh, ginger spice as well in there. It smells really nice and inviting, very warming on the nose. Excuse me, I haven't even gotten to the bay yet and I'm burping. Let's give it a taste, shall we? Cheers. Yeah, it, it's not bad. It felt a little bit watery at first. But the body itself is actually around the medium level. But, you know, it's a porter, so it's not exactly going to be too heavy, like a, a stout or anything like that. But yeah, it, it, it's weird. It initially starts a little bit watery, but then bulks up slightly as you drink it. Definitely get a bit of chocolate now and there. A little hint of like a crumbled up chocolate cake. Slight hint of a marzipan. Those sort of like cakey, desserty, spicy notes. Ginger, um, nutmeg, that sort of thing. Lovely bitterness coming through the hops. It's more of a just a hoppy bitterness as opposed to a, a hoppy flavour. Maybe they're adding some subtle, like, bitter grapefruit notes on the back end that actually works within the context of the beer itself. I will say it's not terribly exciting. And I've got to stop doing that because apparently that's uh, a symbol of uh, white power or something like that. Um, blonde hair, blue eyes. Who cares? I don't know why I keep going now with this video, but whatever. Yeah, it's got like this slight like, cherry wood flavour to it. Little berry notes. Coffee is quite laid back. You get more on the aroma as opposed to what you get on the palate. But it doesn't really feel like it's faded too much. If that makes sense. I mean, yeah, of course it would be super ideal to have a much fresher bottle than this. But it's still got the flavours in there. Get a little bit of that licorice that I was getting on the aroma. Slight hoppiness there, but not too much. Doesn't intrude on the porter style. It is roasty, it's toasty. A little bit thin for my tastes. It's not as warming as you drink it, as you are smelling it. It smells a lot more inviting, actually. Like, Rutty, rutty, nutty, roasty coffee tones, but you get that on the palate. But it is a little bit laid back. But you know what? It's not a bad beer at all. Um, it's just not terribly exciting. It's almost a, a little bit safe, to be fair. I mean, when you hear a mocha porter, you're like, mm, you know, you you can like almost imagine like walking past like a high quality barrister. And getting that like coffee aroma coming through but when you drink it it's it's okay it's sort of like filter coffee in in that regard anyway let's see what happens when we bulk it all up and pour it in don't think it'll change the flavor too much it does smell nice though it really does Yeah, the beer just disperses a little bit too quickly. It does even I'd like like my mouth to be a little bit sticky, almost like I've had molasses in my mouth or something like that. But I think this is one of those beers where if you see it on the shelf and you've had no knowledge of that beer, you're like you're brought in by the name of it, Mocha Porter. If you love your coffee, you're gonna instantly go for it. But then when you drink it, it's like someone's offered you like freshly ground coffee 
but then they end up giving you a filter coffee. It's still nice, it's serviceable, but you're a tad bit disappointed, and uh, that's, that's pretty much summing this one up. Um, I'm slightly warming to the Porter style, but I can't say that this beer would excite me or turn me on to more Porters. Yeah, that, that's the thing. High quality, don't get me wrong, but it's it's, it's okay. It's, you know, above average. No, I'd be a bit more fair than that. It's well above average, but it's really nothing to sing and shout about. But yeah, you get 355 mils, so, you know, it's 25 mils more than we get normally here in Europe. Would I buy it again? I don't think I would. Um, Rogue are one of those breweries where... I'll try any of their beers that I can get my hands on. And uh, I know people may say, oh, you left it too long, and blah, 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 blah. It doesn't taste like it's faded too much. That's the thing. And I could be, I could completely off my rocker with that. But, um, yeah, not bad. Uh, in terms of a rating, I'm going to give the Mocha Porter from Rogue a 7 out of 10. Uh, if you get the opportunity to try it, go for it. Um, some people might absolutely love this beer. That's like the story of every beer, really, isn't it? Some people like are really down on a beer, and then you'll get people like, what? This beer is the best thing in the world. You're an idiot, that sort of thing. But yeah, Rogue, Mocha Porter, 7 out of 10. If you have tried it, let me know your thoughts, opinions. What did I miss? What did you pick up on that I didn't? And uh, yeah, what other beers from Rogue do you suggest that I <laughs> look out for in the future? I know you're a fan of Rogue, um, and like I was saying before, they're known for their sort of like gimmicky out there beers, which from my circles, they never really hit the spot. Um, but it was like Simon Martin made the point of, you know, the, they do mess around a little bit, they have a bit of fun, they never really take themselves too seriously. I mean, like sending condoms out with uh, beers to reviews and that sort of thing. So I don't think they'd be too upset if they were watching this. But yeah, not bad. 7 out of 10. Check out Rogue. Check out my uh, port playlist down below. If any of my friends have reviewed this on YouTube, then of course their reviews will be included. And uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying doing these longer videos now without actually editing them. It just saves me so much time and... I think people actually appreciate you, even if you were to ramble on for half an hour, they'd appreciate that more than like, jump cut, jump cut, jump cut, jump cut, jump cut. Anyway, yeah, I've lost on way too long. Probably did about seven minutes worth of beer reviews there, and then the rest is just me talking absolute shit. But that is life, or thus is life. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Definitely keeping the label and the uh, crown. Yeah. <laughs> See you guys later. Cheers.